Today I've come to the banks of Lake Michigan to pose a fairly troubling question. Have you ever considered how much water there is? We think of our planet as a watery place, the blue planet. 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water, and in fact water is unique as the only natural compound that occurs in all three states. But if we scooped it all up and sculpted that water into a sphere, how big would that sphere be? Well, if we took all water in every state of matter and from every place, that sphere would have a diameter of roughly 1,400 kilometers and contain within it 1.3 billion cubic kilometers of water. If that sphere was then hovering above the USA, it would stretch from roughly New York to Illinois. With water from lakes and rivers, we're left with less than 1% of that original number. The diameter of that sphere would be around 56 kilometers, so it wouldn't even cover New York City, and it would have a volume of just 93,000 cubic kilometers. At any one time, there's around 13,000 cubic kilometers of water in the atmosphere. If all of that fell at the same time and spread evenly around the world, it would be about an inch deep. Now, maybe not that deep, but certainly enough to get your socks wet. The ice caps, glaciers and snow hold around 24 million cubic kilometres. Groundwater accounts for 99% of the liquid fresh water on the planet. There's even a vast aquifer underneath the Sahara Desert that covers an area twice the size of mainland France. Filled with 30,000 cubic kilometres of fresh water, it's thought to be filled with a million years of rainfall. Even though these great aquifers do exist, we generally take more water from them than gets topped up by rainfall. According to a recent study, about 60% of the annual take from the Saharan aquifer wasn't getting replenished at all. And similar situations have been seen the world over. Aquifers that took literally millions of years to fill are drying up. In fact, it takes them so long to recharge, they effectively behave like a finite source, like a fossil fuel. Well, it's thought that the average Brit uses around 150 litres, or 33 gallons, of water per day. However, if we include the amount of water used in processing our imported foods and textiles, known as virtual water, things take a drastic turn for the worse. Estimates range between 3,400 and 4,600 litres, or 880 gallons, per person, per day. And if we multiply that number by the 7.1 billion people on the planet, we'd consume around 28.4 trillion litres of water per day, roughly 28 kilometres cubed of water. By that calculation, humans alone would consume all of the water in all of the lakes and rivers in all the world in just nine years. According to the UN, by 2025, 1.9 billion of us will be living in an area with absolute water scarcity. Two thirds of the world population will be under some kind of water stress. But fortunately, there are many brainy bods out there right now dedicated to this exact problem, trying to find better ways to manage water, from more efficient showers to greater efficacy in agriculture. If you can think of any ways that we can make the most of our water, let us know in the comments, and we'll see you next time on Earth Unplugged. Could humans become aquatic? Well, as you know, apart from the odd swim or diving with tanks of air, prolonged periods of submersion usually result in, at best, wrinkly skin and at worst as you become exhausted drowning. What's so special about these things that, that make them thrive in these hot arid environments? One of the first ones is that they actually don't have to drink water very often. 